Hi guys. So today we're gonna run some stamps. I figured I'd take you along and show you some tricks that I've learned along the ways and see if it helps you out any. So I'm gonna show you the setup I got and then I'll go on the computer and show you the settings and how we laser engrave the stamps. All right, this is the rubber that I use. It's an odorless rubber and I, I really like it. It's been the best for us. It uh, laser etches very nice. Works very well. And then these are the stamps we use. And we've never had an issue with them. They actually have stamped very well for us. We've been using ours for three and a half years. So, and then today we're gonna be using the Fusion. All right, this is the setup I have. This cutting table is actually out of my Legend. And I don't have the cutting table for the for this one, I've never had anything to use that was bigger than this 24 by 20. So I just use this. This is the rubber we're gonna be using. I already have some notches cut out. I showed you the other one that was new. Notice how I have this to the left. And I'll show you why. And then the other one's over here. And it just creates a nice rib and holds everything together how I do this. And that's why it's, it's in the same spot every single time. <clears throat> it works very well. And I've tried it many other ways and it seemed like this was the best way. Otherwise the rubber can get really flimsy and you can't get it up in this corner that nice and up here. So this way you know exactly where you are everything, every time. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. Once you open your file, you'll notice I have this all set up already, but I'll walk you through it. What I like to do with every file when I open it and start a new project with something. I like to put exactly what I do, like right here on the left side of the screen, I have job type, I put in combine because you want vector, then you want the speed, then the power, and then the frequency, and then you have raster, So, and then you have to go to advance in mine and put in stamp so it knows I'm doing a stamp, and then the speed is 50%, and then power is 100%, and then make sure it's in a stamp. Okay, so <clears throat> once you have that done, then whenever you go in here and do it again, you are fine, you have it, so it's always there for you. And you can do a quick job for someone or whichever you would like. What we do is we sell stamps, so we leave this information in here because we use it all the time. So now, looking back at that um, rubber mat that I was showing you, on the left hand side how it was pretty thick that's this part in this yellow box and then the top I came down <clears throat> a sixteenth so this way it just gives me a it because the way it lays it out it, when you go to the end on the very bottom you have it's just a hair under an eighth left of the mat so it actually works out just perfect with doing it this way and then what I like to do is put all my different kinds of fonts right here. So all you have to do is grab it, hit Control D to duplicate, bring it down, <clears throat> and I have my nudge factor set at 0 .06, which is a sixteenth of an inch. Now, here you'll notice there's a box, and then inside there's another rect or a rectangle, and there's another rectangle, and they're rounded corners. Now. The reason why you have to do this is because the laser will pick this up. They're meant to pick this up. It will cut this square. It'll etch this square, excuse me. So all this will get etched, and then when it comes back, it'll cut this radius one. So that's how the stamp is made. <clears throat> so you have to make sure it's at 0 .001, the line thickness and same with the one on the inside and that's how it works it reads it when you put it into the stamp mode so what you do is you pick your font so you type in your name here and then you would put in their address and then you put in their zip code at the bottom some people like it on the same line as this line here and it's whatever the customer prefers or you uh, and then the this is the measurement of the stamp the rounded part where it's going to cut all right so what you do, once you have your stamp, you bring it up in this corner, and now being you have your nudge factor in, you'd hit over 
and down. So now, once you have that started, duplicate another one. Now let's say I close it. Next day I come back, oh, someone else wants one. I can type in their name and the address. I can grab this in the corner where it says Node, bring it up, and I have it set so it snaps to it. Hit over once, and I can do that this whole length. So it would be the whole sheet. See? So now, once you have all that one, that whole line filled, you just grab it, go right underneath to this corner, hit down, now you have another line, then you have this one cut out, and then go again, all the way down. It's, this is, all these little things has helped me to do this really fast and efficient, and it, to keep, you know, be competitive with everyone else. And you know this line here, this yellow line, is the mat. And this is the part you can't etch anyhow because it's the left side where they have that indentation where <clears throat> they tell you what kind of mat it is. So once you have that figured out and you have that put in, you run all these. Well, now you know when the mat's going to be done because you can see it. Plus, every time you put it in, by keeping this part here, and there's another one to the right that's actually right here, but I don't, I don't need that in there because I know it's there because I put this length in. But you know with this thick, this thick one here and the one on the right, then it holds it as like a rib. And then by putting these little ribs in here, the 16th inch, that really helps a lot because now it, you're, you have like a structure. So when you put the mat in there, it's not flimsy and it's, it, it'll hold itself. Let's see. Get rid of these. We don't need those no more. Um, so I'm going to actually go through the process of printing it and filling it out and showing you on M2 laser when I hit control P it'll bring up my print print page I gotta bring it over here so you can see it so the reason why I like to have this over here on the left is because I can go in oh I already have one in here well, I ran it earlier <clears throat> so you go to pick your laser which is the fusion selection go up to preferences now leave your DPI at 600 you want it at combined the page width is the uh, excuse me the cutting cutting table it's 24 by 20 and then you go over here and you got vector so you want to make sure the vector is filled out right and says 6% and then 100% 100% then you leave your image dittering and then you do raster which is 50% and 100%. Now for the fusion, you go up into advance <clears throat> and you click this stamp setting. And this comes stock set like this, but you can change this so your shoulder is wider. So see this blue right here? That would be considered your shoulder. And the red part would be the part where the, the actual leather, the letter is. <clears throat> so you can you can always change those if you don't think they're uh, wide enough shoulder for you but I've never had an issue with these settings here so I leave that uh, just for reference let's look at the other f um, legend that I have because that one's a little different so the selection there preferences now when you go into it job type you have to go to combined. Now once you're in the combined you have to go over here to this plus so it brings it down for the vector and then DPI you leave it page size is right vector speed you want that at 6 power want that at 100 What's going on here? All right, and then frequency for this one, it's five thousand. All right, and then raster, we want fifty, and then autofocus. You can if you want. It's not too much. I don't use it too much. All right, so then when you have that done, you have to go to stamp options.
Oh, my laser's off, so it's not letting me pick it. But you have stamp options, and that would be here. Laser, basic, go to stamp, and then it, oh, there it goes. It highlighted it now. So once you go to raster type, you go to stamp, it knows to do it <clears throat> the square first. It knows to do this square, etch it first, and then cut this radius next. So now that we showed you that, I'll show you how to put it all together and the stamp will be done. So yeah, you know, here's the for the old laser, the settings. And this for the new laser. So just make sure you always take your notes because you never know if you need them or you know if something would ever happen where I couldn't make that stamp that day I was out of the office or anything then my wife can do it or someone else can do it. So alrighty well let's go and I'll show you how to put the rest of it together and we'll go from there. All right, once you get the piece cut out, I like to take a dry toothbrush and just rub it on there, clean it up nice so it looks nice. And gets all the, soots up, the soot off of there to make sure it's gonna stamp really nice and even. And then I like to take a scissors and there's once in a great while, just trim one of these corners off that has excess rubber on it. This way you won't get it to touch down when you actually stamp. You won't see a little rounded area because you want the rubber, you want the whole thing cut to the, uh, right up to the letters. So let's put this together. <clears throat> all right, once you got it all cleaned up, I'm gonna take the box and open it. And it comes with another piece of paper for the inside in case you smudge this one. So let me take it and pull this off. And then you're gonna push down. Let's see if you can see that better. You're gonna push down right here. Now on the sides, you're gonna see a little lock button. See that? It's on each side. So if we take that, push that in, see how it locks it and holds it? Now it says top and it has an arrow pointing up. You want the name of the stamp to go to the top. Now be, because this is for a customer, I'm not gonna show you the whole stamp because I don't want their address on there. To be respectful. You got some jokesters out there that'll probably send them something or do something, try to be funny, but all right, so once you push it on, then all you do is you push on the corners and it pops back and it goes back and it actually stamps it. <clears throat> then what I like to do, I like to take a piece of paper and I'll take the stamp to see if everything's right. And I'll look at the order. And then if it is, what I do from there is I take the piece that was in there, fold it down, and you line up so the white center piece, see that, this white piece right here, you want that, you want the stamp to be center. So you center it in your box of your stamp, push down evenly, and it's stamped on once you have it. You can put that piece back in, put this on, and it just slides right on, clips in. And then what I like to do is take this piece out of the box, slide that in there. So once I have this done and packaged, I bring it over to my wife and then she throws it in a box, mails it off to the person and that's it. That's how you make a stamp. Uh, if you have any questions, please let, let us know in the comments if you want me to make something else or maybe we already make it and I can make it for you and show you. Uh, if you have any other questions on tips or tricks that I have, let me know and I will let you know in the comments or I'll make another video for you. I am pretty open. I think this is a good community for all of us to get together and, you know, let's learn everyone's tricks so it makes it better for all of us and a lot better for our customers. Um, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. 
and I'm glad you got to see me again.